大家好，这是第三课。我叫 Warren。Lesson three will cover the English words for body parts, visiting a doctor who may not speak Chinese, and common words and phrases you might use in the doctor's office. I will cover the first part: body parts, common phrases, and the new vocabulary. Priscilla will cover body parts as well. And the new vocab words, so you can hear another English speaker say these words. She will also cover adverbs and how to make sentences you can use at the doctor's office. Please join our WeChat groups. You can contact me on the Intermediate ESL WeChat group, or by my WeChat ID, Warren. H. Wong. I would like very much to hear from you. This was the homework that I assigned you for lesson two. You were to describe the route that you take to CISC. Please pause this video and read aloud what you wrote to yourself, speaking perfect. English. Do you do you remember this from last week? Can you say these phrases in English? D. There. D. R. Here. D. Sun. Far. Next one, near or close. Do you, you go back along this road? How do I get to the bank from here? DT. You go forward along this road. Deba. The supermarket is near here. Is that place far from the park? Be sure. My home is near the company. And the last one. Go straight back. Did you get those right? The body parts. I hope you know these parts well, but let's let's review them. As I say each part, I will show you the Chinese word. Then you should say the English word along with me. Head. Head. Hair. Hair. Eye. Eye. What is the plural for eye? Eyes. What do you wear if you cannot see very well? Eyeglasses, ear, ear, nose, nose, mouth. What is inside your mouth? Teeth. What is the singular for teeth? Tooth. I broke one tooth. Shoulder. Shoulder. Finger. Finger. Hand. Hand. Arm. Arm. Knee. What is the plural for knee? Knees. My knees always hurt when I run. Leg. Toe. Foot. Do you know the plural for foot? Feet.
Here are some common phrases at the doctor's office. When you go to the reception, you may hear a conversation like this. You may say, I'd like to see a doctor. Then they will say, do you have an, an appointment? Do you have an, an, point, an appointment? Or they may ask you, is it urgent? Is it urgent? You may say, I'd like to make an appointment to see Dr. Lee. You may also ask, do you, ha do you have any doctors who speak Chinese? Then they may ask you about how you will pay and ask you, do you have med private medical insurance? Do you, do you have private medical insurance? Here is some more dialogue with the doctor. Sp speak after me, or speak along with me. How can I help you? What's the problem? What are the symptoms? I've been feeling sick. I have been having headaches. I'm in a, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm having difficulty breathing. Is there any possibility you might be pregnant? I think I might be pregnant. Do you have allergies? I'm allergic to antibiotics. Let me show you the, the new words in this dialogue. I translated these words using Google Translate. So I apologize if I got them wrong. The first new word here is breathing. Pregnant. Allergies. Antibiotics. So let me use these new words in the dialogue. I'm having difficulty breathing. I think I might be pregnant. Do you have any allergies? I'm allergic to antibiotics. Did I translate these words correctly? Let me know if I got them wrong. These are the new vocabulary words for lesson three. Please repeat them after me. Short, short. Tall, tall. Fat, fat. Skinny, skinny. Handsome, handsome. Handsome is used to describe a man. He is handsome. Pretty, pretty, pretty is used to describe woman. She is pretty. Ugly, ugly, ugly can be used to describe anyone or anything. Strong, strong, weak, weak, sick, Sick, tired, pain, pain, ache, ache. I see that the word tongue is the same for pain as well as ache. Dull, you may say I have a dull ache. Do you know what the opposite of dull is? sharp. I have a sharp ache. Sore. Sore. Nauseous. Nauseous. One more time. Nauseous. Can you say it correctly? 
nauseous. You should know that the British, in Goran, pronounce it nauseous. In America, it's pronounced nauseous. Headache, headache. Vomit, vomit. What's another word for vomit? Throw up. Diarrhea, diarrhea. Cut, cut, bruise, bruise. Tight, stiff, broken. Can you say these phrases in English? Well, totem. I have a headache. What about DR? I caught a cold last week. D san. Ofashaula. Say that in say that in English. I have a fever. Can you say what kaso? I have a cough. What about the next one? I feel weak. I'm throwing up. If you did it yesterday, if you threw up yesterday, you would say, I threw up. Tipa, I feel nauseous. I feel nauseous. I threw up three times yesterday. I broke my hand. My back really hurts. The last one, I have diarrhea. Did you get these right? Before I hand this lesson over to Priscilla, I want to show you the homework for lesson three. The homework is to write down sentences that you may need to, need to say to a doctor. Use the grammar points that you've learned from this video, as well as the grammar points that Priscilla will be teaching you. Tell the doctor what is wrong with you. What hurts? What are your symptoms? How long have you had these symptoms? Be sure to use the grammar points that Priscilla is teaching you. For example, the adverbs of frequency. An example would be, my knees always hurt when I run. Or you can say, my knees sometimes hurt when I run. Priscilla will go over these adverbs of frequency with you and also go over this homework assignment. I will now turn this lesson over to Priscilla. Thank you so much for watching this uh, part of lesson three. I hope your English is much better. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, Hao. I'm Priscilla, or Su Lan, the Chinese name. Um, Huan Ying Lai Dao, Intermediate ESL Lesson 3. Welcome back for Intermediate ESL Lesson 3, Part 2. Chi Chi Warren talked to you earlier about uh, the doctor's office. Um, some body parts and, and other vocabulary for a doctor's office visit. Uh, I'm going to 
go over some of that vocabulary, but mostly what I'm going to talk about are um, adverbs of frequency. Um, first, though, um, um, 一个温柔的提醒, um, a little gentle reminder to join the WeChat groups. Um, there's two of them. Uh, there's uh, the one for uh, the CISC, Renan Fu Fu Shu, its own uh, uh, WeChat site, but also for intermediate ESL. And Warren and I will try to answer questions if you have any, and if you send them to us. And here are um, my and Warren's WeChat ID. Okay, I'm going to talk about the homework, review the homework at the end of my also. All right, adverbs of frequency. And this is a page that's in your textbook. Um, so I need a coven. Uh, adverbs of frequency. Well, these are words that indicate how often something happens. So, 表示多久一个情况一次, uh, or you could say, 只是某事发生的频率. You could say both of those. And, and if you look on the slide, you see the numbers here in, in percentages, percent is um, uh, by fun. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the numbers might help you understand the meaning of some of these words, might help with understanding the, the meaning of the is of, of, of these English words. Mm -hmm. So that when we say 100%, we mean everything. Yi all the time. Um, so, um, for example, um, whereas, and the difference between 100, which is all the time, and zero, which is nothing, not at all. So that would be, you know, Ling, <laughs> or Shema um, Domeyo. Uh, all right, and then these other words on this upside down um, triangle have different percentages. So when you hear someone say "usually," uh, it's it's not all the time. It's not "mei shi mei ke," but it's close. You know, it's very close now at at ninety percent, if you understand percentages. Mm -hmm. And, and rarely, rarely, for example, is not, it's not never, it's not shima dome yo, it's not ling, it's, it's, uh, I, actually, it, it translates to more hun shao, hun shao, or, or, yeah, I think that's, I think that's probably the best. But let's go over each one of these sentences for each of these words. And then, um, after we do that, I'm going to talk about um, three three commonly used um, important adverbs uh, in a little bit more, with a little bit more um, information, more uh, detail, more information. So first of all, always. The sentence they use is, I always wake up at six. So that means, uh, and, um, uh, and and the the Chinese translation I always wake up at six o'clock would be this. Okay. So a word that is used, uh, the Chinese equivalent word in, uh, for always is is often zongshi. Um, but sometimes, and we'll look at this a little later. I'll have a, an extra slide talking about the word always. Um, but another uh, Chinese phrase that's used that means always, or it's translated um, to English as always, is um, 一直. 
So we'll look at that a little later, how that shows up. All right, so the next, the next word, so not 100% of the time, not mei shi, mei ke, okay, um, but close, about 90% of the time um, is the word usually. I usually come home um, after work. So not every day, you know, most of the time. I usually come home after work. And the, the Chinese equivalent for usually um, is um, ping, ping chang. So here's this sentence. Uh, mm -hmm. So that would be the word usually. The important thing about learning these words is so that when you have an idea that you want to express, you can um, you can say it more clearly. Um, you don't have to say, I wake up at six. You can give somebody else more information about yourself by saying, I always wake up at six. Or sometimes, half the time, I wake up at six, sometimes. Okay, let's get on to normally or generally. So normally or generally is a little, it's not always, it's not 100%, it's not all the time. It's not usually, but it's still pretty often. Okay, so normally I swim after school. Normally, um, you still, the Chinese words are similar, um, and these numbers are not really perfect. If these are um, just ideas. Um, so ping chang and tong chang are, are often used and translated to mean normally or generally. So I normally swim after school and that sentence in Chinese would be this. Fang shi hou wo ping shi wo ping shi you yong. Okay, so, so ping shi, ping chang, tong chang. Okay, the next um, adverb of frequency um, is often or frequently. So it's, it's not as, again, not as much as, it's not always, um, it's not usually, it's not normally, a little less at, at, at judged at 70%. Um, I often spend Christmas with friends. So. Um, the sentence in Chinese would be this one. Uh, it's translated often or frequently as jing uh, chang or wang wang, wang wang. So we're jing chang, he peng yo, guo sheng gan jie. The next adverb of frequency is sometimes. Sometimes is yi ban shi jin. And this, it's, the translation is, uh, it's, um, 有时候, or 有些时候, or 有的时候. And if it's interesting, there are rules about where you put adverbs, but the word sometimes doesn't fit with the, the rules or the patterns. The rules are 规则, 规则 or uh, patterns for writing are um, 语法, 语法, um, 模式. Sometimes doesn't doesn't go with pattern. Sometimes can be here, right after the subject, right after the 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 ju yu ju yu, and then you can put the adverb fu si, and then you can put the dong si, and then the rest of the sentence. But sometimes can be here at the beginning. Sometimes I play tennis on weekends. I sometimes play tennis on weekends. I play tennis on weekends on the weekend sometimes. So it can go here, here, or here, but it doesn't sound as good um, if, you, you, if you do the other adverbs like that. Always I wake up at six o'clock. It's okay, but it's not. You don't hear people say that commonly. Uh, it might be said that way for a to make a point for emphasis. Uh -huh. All right, so back to sometimes. Sometimes um, I play tennis on the weekend and that word 
that sentence in Chinese would be 就摸我,我有时,我有时的网球,网球。有时,有时候,有些时候,有的时候,嗯,pretty much all that. Occasionally is, is less than half the time, and see, they put that at 30%. Here, so it's not not even half the time. Uh, it's a little less, so less than sometimes. I occasionally eat Vietnamese food, and that the words for um, occasionally are uh, or is a, a close um, translation. Or war, which yet yen an tai So uh, moving on. Seldom is um, usually translated as putang, so pretty simply. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rarely is, is almost never. So it's a little bit less than seldom. So rarely is translated as shao or han shao. Um, and that sentence would be. Um, 我很少听收音机, so 很少 is rarely, uh, 不长, 不, 不, 不长 is seldom, and what was occasionally, occasionally was uh, OR, sometimes it's 有时候, 有的时候, 有些时候, 有时, all those, often again is uh, 经常, uh, normally and generally is uh, 平常 or 通常, and usually, usually we had as a 平常 or a 平素, uh, and always is we used uh, 总是. Now we come down to never. There's uh, multiple ways, um, even more ways of saying never in Chinese, uh, at least that I've encountered that are translated as English never. And we'll look at that a little bit more. Um, but commonly you see uh, 从不, or 从, 从来, um, So this sentence, I never listen to rock music, would be this. Or 从不听, um, 雅古尼耶. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to say about that. No. But let me move on here and go to the next slide, which um, talk about grammar patterns. Uh, with using adverbs, the adverbs of frequency, but most adverbs uh, appear in the sentence. You use them at a certain place in the sentence. So two patterns that I want you to understand. When you're using the words uh, that are the to be verbs, to be verbs meaning um, as they are here, I am, he is, uh, we are, you are, or in past tense, I was, they were. Okay, so any of these uh, to be verbs. Uh, you put the subject first. The, the ju yu goes first. Then the verb. Then the adverb. And then the description. Because if you're using a to be verb, most of the sentence is talking about the person, the subject. That's how the to be verbs work. I am hungry. I am tired. I am beautiful. Okay, so I I was sleepy. So if you're going, if you're when you're using these verbs, this is the pattern: subject, verb, adverb, and the description. So, uh, do you? And then the don't si to be. And then the adverb, the fu si. And then the description, yao shu. But most of the other verbs, for most of the other verbs, you usually, remember we talked about usually, that's not all the time. That's not always. Um, it's, it's not even, it's, it's a little bit less than always, but it's a lot of the time. They, they put it on that, uh, when they put a number to it, it was 90%. Okay, so a lot of the time, most of the time, but not always. Um, this is the pattern. Uh, subject, 
then the adverbs, the adverbs right after the subject, and then the verb, and then the rest of the sentence, the object of the sentence, due to the being you, due to the being you, comes last. So subject, do you, and then the adverb, and then the verb. Okay, so if you're using the word to be, any of the to be verbs, I am, she is, then it's subject, verb, adverb. If you're using any of the other verbs, eat, sleep, drink, want, think, all the other verbs, um, then it's, this is usually the pattern, subject, adverb, verb, an object. So let's go back to that slide um, with all the adverbs of frequency and look at this pattern two, which is subject, adverb, verb, and then the rest of the sentence. So here you go. Subject, I, always, adverb, wake up, verb, at six o'clock. I usually... So subject, adverb, come home, afterward, okay. Are there, if you notice all these sentences, the verbs in all these sentences are regular verbs. They're not to be verbs. Wake, come, swim, spend, play, eat, go, listen, listen. So the pattern in all these sentences is the same, the same pattern. Yang and it's this pattern. Subject, zhu yu, adverb, or the adverb of frequency, so fu se, and then the dong se, okay, and then the rest of the sentence, the zhu de de, bing yu, bing yu. Okay, so I always wake up, I usually come home, I normally swim, I often spend Christmas, I sometimes play tennis, I occasionally eat Vietnamese food, I seldom go to the library, I rarely listen, I never listen. Let's go back to sometimes. Sometimes is, um, sometimes doesn't always follow the rule. A good sentence a good sentence is, I sometimes play tennis on the weekend. A good sentence is also, sometimes I play tennis on the weekend. So that's not this pattern. And a good sentence is, I play tennis on the weekend sometimes. All sound good, all commonly used. So, but the other words, the other words, um, usually, usually ping chong, ping chong. Um, use this pattern. Let's move on. And I want to talk about three of the adverbs of frequency, three that are um, um, 常用的, 平语的, 不是, commonly used adverbs of frequency. It's, it's, it's just not simple, but maybe it'll help you know how, how to say things that you want to say to people. Always. Always means all the time. So one of the words, one of the phrases um, that translates to always from Chinese is zong shi. And here are some sentences um, in which the Chinese, so you, if you take this Chinese sentence, that's this sentence in English. She is always very composed. The Chinese ta zong shi han han wen. Another, this, now this one's interesting because this Chinese sentence can be translated into English two ways. Zong shi. Zong shi can, is always. But it can also be translated to this word ki, as in continuing. Ji shu to keep on, keep on continuing to do something. So, um, is don't always look for faults or don't keep finding fault. You may hear these, this word keep used in this way and maybe knowing this 
will help you understand when you hear that or when you see this word in a sentence. Don't keep looking for it. You're not going to find it. Don't always look for that. You're not going to find it. Don't keep crying. It's not going to help. Don't always cry. It's not going to help. Things like sentences like that. Keep is similar. And you might hear that used that way. Okay. I always drink coffee in the morning. So uh, this sentence becomes this sentence in English. That's an easy one. You may have heard that in books before. Here's this sentence in Chinese about flowers. And Shang um, Kui Zong Shi Chao Xiang Taiyang. They always turn toward the sun. And he always feels a bit nervous. Ta Tan Zhong Fa Yan Zong Shi Zhao Ji. So these is these sentences are examples of uh, when Zong Shi is in a Chinese sentence, it translates to always. Sometimes, it, sometimes the word keep uh, shows up. Now I want to show you uh, in, a, in a couple of sentences that I came across in the Chinese that use the, the expression yi, yi zhi, um, but the translation is always. So here's uh, a sentence, I'm always waiting for you. I'm waiting for you all the time. So always and all the time. Mei shi mei ke. Okay. Wo yi zhi zai deng ni. The Chinese sentence is a lot easier. The English sentences can be two different, two different sentences. I'm waiting for you all the time. I'm always waiting for you. So here's an example where, so you may normally, you may be thinking in your mind, thinking in Chinese, uh, thinking of saying something, or yi zhi, da 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 da. And and so saying it in English, you might say, I always, da 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 da, or I all the time. All right, da, 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 all the time. Also, an interesting, and this is a little bit more complicated sentence. Always uh, means all the time. It means all the time in the past, now, and in the future. So, either makes sense to use in that it means um, like continuing or, or keeping on, right? Keeping going in a certain direction, right? So that's, in, uh, I was reading um, New York Times, um, um, a couple of days ago, on um, April 15th. And I found this sentence, this Chinese sentence. Uh, and this is the translation. I have always paid attention to the survival of the week. Um, and then the rest, I can't, I can't just read it. So easily, I have to look some of these words. I think that's uh, uh, You have to read it, but you can see. The point is, is used in a way that when it goes into English, means always. So again, when you're trying to express something and you mean you... Um, have done something, or you do something, or you feel something now. It's the same as before. It's now and in the future. You can use zong shi, but you can also use yi zhi in how you're thinking about it in Chinese. But when you speak in English, always would probably uh, uh, would probably express, would probably say the right thing for what you want to say. Okay, moving on. I hope that was helpful. Anyway, here's a little practice. So if you would, at this point, uh, pause the video. And, and um, uh, these, these sentences, and complete these sentences. This is grammar practice uh, with uh, patterns and adverbs. And, and the practice is, I'll explain it first, and then you can pause and try to complete. Um, 
these sentences. I want you to practice using always with to be verbs. And this is the pattern. I, you know, the subject, the to be verb, the adverb, and then the description. I always drink coffee, for example. I want you to use these uh, uh, patterns, these sentence beginnings, and to finish the sentence so that you practice saying something about you using that pattern in English. And then, so that's three sentences here. I am, you are, she is, always, say something. And then um, I want you to practice the other pattern where we use always with a different verb, not to be. So the pattern, as, you, as we looked at, when you use other verbs, it's, it's subject, adverb, and then the verb, and then the rest of the sentence. So pause for a moment, try to write those sentences, and then we'll come back and I'll show you my sentences. Okay, well, I hope you paused the video. I didn't. You can pause. And here's what I did with those sentences. I'll give you my examples. I'm always late to work. Okay. You are always early. She is always there. So I use zongshi in all of these. I don't know how to say that, but you can read it. Okay. Um, I always drink coffee. We, that's an example we've been given. And I exercise. I always exercise in the morning. So, I don't know what your sentences were. If you had trouble with your sentences, you can send the question through WeChat to me or Warren. Okay, moving on. Sometimes, as I said, um, sometimes doesn't always follow the rules. Sometimes, uh, in the sentences I have here, sometimes it's always here in the beginning, as you see. But you could put it at the end of these sentences. It also would sound good. You could put it in the middle. That would sound good, too. Um, so, but anyway, um, what I'm showing you here is that sometimes is about half the time. Iban the shijin, or iban the shijing, doesn't always happen. Uh, about half the time, iban the shijin, or shihuan zuo, I like to do something. Um, and about the other half, chitada, um, iban the shijin, I do something else. So here it is. Sometimes I'm unable to fall asleep. You can use yo shiho, translates to this. You can use yo de shiho. This sentence in Chinese becomes this in English. That might be appropriate for now. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of the news is very is uh, upsetting right now. Okay. Um, you can also use use shiho. There's multiple ways. Yoshia um, shiho. Tahan, um, I don't remember how we say that word either, but she's sometimes lonely. That's all with that. The pattern subject, this is an I am verb, right? And in the am, when you use to, the to, to be verb, am is a to be verb, and the pattern is subject, verb, adverb, and then description. Now here, sometimes it's here, adverb, subject, verb. So as I said, sometimes this, this adverb doesn't follow, doesn't go with the rules, and, but the other adverbs usually do. Totang, the others usually um, uh, follow the rules. Go on. Never. Never is interesting. I'm not, I've studied Chinese a long time, I don't speak very fluently. Um, but uh, I read a lot, and I find 
many words, many phrases um, that translate to never. So it seems like maybe Chinese has more words for never, more ways to say never than English. Um, so here are some examples. And the reason I give this information is because maybe you're thinking using some of these words and you wonder, how do I say this in English? So there's a number of ways that Chinese express never. Um, and again, never is um, shima do mi yo, o ling, zero percent. So, um, okay, let's look at the first one. Uh, what's interesting is that it's the opposite of always. It's the opposite. Um, 从不有, uh, 总是, 是, 总是, uh, 相反, 相反, the opposite. The opposite, 相反, they also directly correspond. And I'm going to show you that down below here. You can be this sentence or that sentence. The sentence is, you could write the, you could, you could s express the idea. You could write the idea um, with never or with always and have the same meaning. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 are, they, are, they directly, they correspond. And that, 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 that word is uh, directly correspond. So let's look at, um, uh, here's an example right here. I gave it up front. Okay, good. I never drink coffee, always drink tea. Not this, but this. So I never, zero, drink coffee. I always, 100% of the time, drink tea. Mm -hmm. This is how, what I mean by directly correspond. Okay, other examples of of, of um, words in Chinese that get translated and mean never. Uh, the adverb never, the adverb of frequency, never. Mm -hmm. So um, one way that people express never in Chinese, and then it translates to never in English, is um, zai ye, zai ye, mm -hmm. and a neg uh, this negative expression. Um, so, Iga, Fu Mian Chan Chu, Fu Mian Chan Chu. I will never, so this, this sentence, Wo Jiu Zai Ye Jian Bu Dao Ni. Okay, so this is a negative expression, but Zai Ye, and this is the negative expression, Jian Bu Dao Ni, Jian Bu Dao. Translates into English, I will never see you again. Mm -hmm. So, Zai Ye plus a negative expression, Iga. Means never. I will never see you again. But you have to have the, the negative. So, Jen uh, Dao is a negative expression. Another way of saying it is with Tong Lai in a negative expression. So, Wo Tong Lai Mei You Jen Guo Ni. So I have never seen him before. Mm -hmm. That translates into never, never seen before, never. Okay, Tong Lai, Mei Jin, So Tong Lai with a negative clause. Then Tong Bu. Tong Bu is pretty simple. Um, so you might be thinking the Tong Bu, Xiu Bian, Xiu Bian, um, um, means he never, never pays attention to his appearance. So, Tongbu is pretty easy. Tongbu, Tongbu, Chaozhi, Chaozhi, Tongbu, Chaozhi, never live beyond your means, never spend uh, more than you, the money you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another uh, expression uh, is a little bit more complicated. I found it in a um, a song by a popular Taiwan singer, a Taiwan uh, and his name is um, Zhang Zhenyue. Zhang Zhenyue. Here you go. Zhang Zhenyue. And is the song Zai Jin. Song Zai Jin. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it comes from the song Zai Jian. Here's the, here's the line. Here's the line in Chinese. Okay, so straight out of his song. Uh, this is Okay, so these days will never be erased. Never be erased. Okay, so again, it's a, it's this yong yuan do in a negative expression. Is it, is then you would use the word never in English. So what I'm saying is what I've observed is that there are quite a few ways the Chinese language says never. So if you're thinking in these terms, if this is, these are the, this is how your thoughts are in your mind and you want to express yourself in English, you use the word never. Okay. Zaya, Jim Badao, I never, never see you again. Okay. Or Yong Yen Do, Bu Hui. You know, never will be able to be erased. And then finally, one, one more way that I've noticed never, uh, and I think there's more than I've noticed, uh, is, is Wu. <laughs> so here's a famous saying, Yiju uh, Ming uh, Yan, um, heaven never seals off all exits. Tian Wu Jie Ren Ji Lu. Okay, where you can say the English from this is heaven never seals off exits. And that's a pretty direct, a closely direct translation, but it's also correctly translated as there's always a way out. Mm. Okay, moving on. Another grammar pattern um, that I thought I'd point out. It's not in your textbook here, but maybe it's helpful. I like to learn about patterns. Um, so the pattern is this. We talked about in lesson two auxiliary verbs, some auxiliary verbs, uh, do, does, and can. Mm -hmm. There's other auxiliary verbs. So, but when you're using auxiliary verbs, have, can, will, mm -hmm, the adverb goes between the auxiliary verb and the verb. Okay? So, shiyong, ju dong ci de shi hou, okay? Fu si fang zai, ju dong ci he, dong ci zhi jian, all right? So, the pattern, the more shi, the subject, okay? So, ju yu, the auxiliary verb, okay? Ju dong ci, dong ci, ju dong ci, the adverb, fu si, then the verb, don't si, plus the whole rest of the sentence, the rest of the sentence. So here's an example. I, subject, will, auxiliary verb, never. Um, the um, adverb, fu si, uh -huh. here's the verb, don't si, and here's the rest of the stinky tofu. I will never eat stinky tofu. Okay, and that's uh, chou dofu. <laughs> I don't like the smell. All right, so maybe that's helpful to you to see these patterns. We've talked about three patterns. We've talked about a pattern when you have the to be verb, I am, he is, um, they are, um, I am always late to work. Okay, so the adverb comes after the verb. But then regular verbs, it usually comes, usually, tong chang comes before the verb. Mm -hmm. uh, she always drinks coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then when you have these auxiliary verbs, um, then the adverb comes between the auxiliary verb, the ju dong si, and the adverb. The adverb, fu si, is between the auxiliary verb, will, can, I can always, I can always eat rice. I can always eat rice. I can always eat candy. I can always eat, okay, so um, can 
auxiliary verb. Always adverb. Eat verb. Mm -hmm. Auxil auxiliary. Ju dong si. Um Adverb. Fu si. And then the verb dong si. So this is the third pattern. Moving on. Ji su. So here's a, um, an exercise. I'm not going to ask you to pause. I'll just go over the exercise. But you could practice this. Because a part of this lesson is practicing how to talk to a doctor if the doctor does not speak Chinese or doesn't speak Chinese well. So um, the exercise, the practice is um, making sentences um, in which you, sentences that doctors might ask you mm -hmm, or you might ask doctors and answers that you might have. And you might use adverbs of frequency. Adverbs of frequency are very useful, very helpful. Um, um, uh, um, to say things to the doctor. For example, um, here's the one, how often, how, how often do you have a headache? And you might say, you know, Sometimes, hmm? or you might say, tian, or you might say, um, uh, you might say that. Okay, but you would have to say it in English. So it would be, I always have a headache. I sometimes, half the time yes, half the time no. And, and thinking about which adverb of frequency tells the doctor about your your symptoms, your uh, the best. Okay, so here are a few more questions. How um, how often do you have pain here? Mm -hmm. That's a question, um, and the answer might be it always hurts. Okay, how often do you exercise? I usually, uh, uh, exercise three times a week. Mm -hmm. And how often do you relax with friends? Well, rarely now with the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Chinese would be. It's rarely. So you know that means not much. Social distancing. Mm. Okay, moving on. So here we are asking you to pause the video, Zanting Shi Ping Sha, and try to. Um, uh, put answers in for these and then the next slide is also the same thing so I'll just wait a few minutes for you to do these but here you're going to um, um, rewrite the sentence so chong xie, chong xie, uh, the 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 write the following sentences and and use the proper verbs yong uh, fu si, all right um, they, and here's an example they go to the movies and the word they want you to use is often so you'd write the sentence, they often go to the movies. If you're going to put this word into the sentence. I, I want to show you too, though. You can also say they go to the movies often, and that sounds good too. Again, not following the rule. I remember I said the rules, usually the pattern is used, but not always. So here, just, so, uh, zanting, uh, shipping, sha, and, 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 uh, and try these um, for just a minute, and then I'll show you the answers that I have. Okay, he reads the local newspaper sometimes. Remember we talked about sometimes. You can put sometimes anywhere, but. So here, <laughs> sometimes he reads the local newspaper. That's a good answer. He sometimes reads the local newspaper. Or he reads a local newspaper sometimes. Any of those are fine. Because sometimes is that word that you can put in the beginning, in the middle, at the end of the sentence. It's okay. Okay. Sarah has a toothache. And they want you to word, use the word never. Or how would you write that? She has a toothache. What's the pattern? What's the pattern with, with the word has? She never has a toothache. Mm -hmm. So subject, adverb, verb. 
Okay. Uh, she complains about her husband always. So what would be the pattern there? Well, it's not a to be verb. So here it is. She always, so subject, adverb, verb. She always complains about her husband. Let's look at the next page. So, so pause the video for a moment and try to do these three. Okay, so I hope maybe you did pause and try it. But I'll continue here. I feel tired. Where would you put the word rarely in rewriting this, sentences, this sentence? Well, the pattern is subject, adverb, and then verb, right? So it would be this. I rarely feel tired. Frank is sick. What about this verb? What does that verb tell you about the pattern and where often should go? Mm -hmm. Frank is often sick. So subject, verb, and then the adverb. Okay, so here's that gentle reminder. When Rhoda, when Rhoda, uh, uh, Ting Xing. And finally, the last word, I smoke. So they want you to put the word normally in there. And yes, normally I smoke. It's at the beginning. How come? Well, uh, you could say it that way. The, the pattern is usually followed, but not always. In this case, normally sounds okay. Normally I smoke. I normally smoke. I smoke normally. Doesn't sound as good. Okay. So, moving on. Teacher Warren covered um, common, um, some basic words uh, for you to know about body parts. This picture has more words, has some of the same words, but more. And, and, and so, um, and one thing that Teacher Warren and I talked about was that he grew up in Seattle. Um, uh, but um, I grew up in the Northeast. I grew up in New York. So what that means is um, sometimes how I pronounce things is different from how Warren pronounces things. So they want me to go over these same vocabulary words with you, and, and I think it's the next slide also, so that you can hear the way I say things. And, and maybe that'll also help you in hearing and understanding ping uh, ping dong, ping dong da. It'll help you with that. So what I'm saying is, you will the so I'm going to go through this vocabulary. You can say that with me or just listen. Um, and, and the words will animate a little bit so you'll see what, what I'm talking about. So head, head, head. And that's this whole, this is all the head. Forehead forehead that's this part eyebrow eyebrow that's these okay these eyebrow mm -hmm. um hair hair that's this this person mm -hmm. um eye yanjing okay ear or door mm -hmm. um Nose, bizu, mm -hmm. mouth, de ba, mm -hmm. cheek. I don't know how you say that in Chinese, but those. Chin, this part here. Neck, mm -hmm. uh, fingers, and that's this here. Hand, shou, hand. Let's hold the whole hand. Arm, arm is. All of this, all of this, all of this. That's the arm. Shoulders are here, right? So up here on the on the on the picture. That's the shoulder. 
elbow. Mm -hmm. So that's right here on the picture. Uh, chest, xiongbu. Mm -hmm. And uh, waist. Women are always concerned about their waist. Mm -hmm. It's right here. Waist is underneath his elbow there, so his arm there, some there and there. Okay. But that's different from the stomach or the belly, which is duzi. Uh, leg, that's this entire, this entire part is the leg. The hip, that's this part here, right under the belly. It's, it's on the side, um, uh, the thigh is this part of the leg here. Shigai is the knee. Mm -hmm. Calf is this part of the leg, this bottom part here. And it's mostly, it's often refers to this part to see where the muscle sticks out. Uh, ankle is this part is right here, uh, just before the foot, which is your jowl. Now here is, a, um, if you follow this link, if you go to YouTube, and you put this in, um, there's um, a really enjoyable um, video with music. Uh, so it's a music video about body parts. And uh, it just says, I move my head, head, head. It's kind of catchy. I move my arms, arms, arms. Uh, it translates to, 我, very simple, um, but the music is catchy. Sometimes um, music and these kinds of things can help people remember um, vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes practicing a song with words and, and moving while you're singing can help, is a way to help, um, help the brain to remember new things. So I, I recommend you go here, put all this in, and, and listen and practice. And you may see even some other videos when you go to this, you go to that YouTube site, you might see some other videos that would help you to practice. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on here. Again, um, uh, Lakshya Warren had asked me to go over this vocabulary to say it to you again, even though he did it with you, uh, because my pronunciation was fine. Uh, all right, so I'm going to do that. I'll say each word twice so you can hear it. You can say it with me if you want. Um, short, short, tall, tall, fat, fat, skinny, skinny, handsome. Handsome, pretty, pretty, ugly, ugly, strong, strong, weak, weak, sick, sick, tired, tired, pain, pain. Ache, ache, dull, dull, sore, sore, nauseous, nauseous, or sometimes people say nauseous, 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 headache, headache, vomit, vomit. Diarrhea, diarrhea, cut, cut, bruise, bruise, tight, tight, stiff, stiff, broken, broken. All right, I hope that was helpful. Moving on, the homework. Don't do so, yeah. All right, um, Lausha Warren went over the homework with you, and I 
the same homework as the other slide. Write down some sentences, okay? So, that you may say to a non-Chinese speaking doctor, that you may have to talk to a doctor who's an Yishung, Tada, Zhongwen, Zhongwen, so, like me. <laughs> so, um, in these sentences, so this is for you to practice. We're not going to hear it, so you can be very honest. You can talk about real problems. How would you tell a doctor about your real problems um, using English? And maybe you were answer these questions. What's wrong with you? Zimala. Or uh, what hurts? Shimatong. Or what symptoms do you have? Niyo uh, shima and how long have you had your symptoms? Yeah, so try to answer those questions about something that you, or you could be talking about your child. How, how would you explain to a doctor who doesn't speak Chinese well, uh, explain some of the problems with your child? What's wrong? Uh, okay, so things like that. When writing the sentences, okay, use the adverbs of frequency. Okay, and you can see that those are very helpful. A doctor wants to know: Does your head? Do you have a headache always? That's something different from sometimes. Always is, remember, always is. So, that's different from or 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 something like that. That's really different. So practice uh, explaining these symptoms or problems that you or a friend or your child, what you might say to a doctor, okay? Uh, but use these adverbs of frequency so that you become comfortable. And here are some examples now. Your teacher, Warren, used some of these examples before. Uh, my knee always hurts. Um, when I run, um, okay, that's important. But my knee sometimes hurts when I run. Well, um, I don't know what a doctor would say. If it always hurts, they say something different. If it sometimes hurts. When I run, my knees never hurt, but my feet hurt. Okay, so these are some examples of talking to a doctor. Okay, um, I hope you're well. Uh, I hope that you stay well. Um, uh, uh, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.